Erling Khan was the first of the demigods to be banished. He believed himself superior to the Elder Gods and grew bitter with their rule. His constant arguments with them became more fierce, until the day he flew into a mad rage and struck one of them down. The remaining Elder Gods acted swiftly, banishing the God Slayer to the deepest pits of the Abyss. In his millennia of exile, his rage and power only grew. Now he seeks to cleanse the world with fire, burning everything the Elder Gods create to ash. Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to be playing Sorcerer, and not just the Sorcerer box sitting beside me. We have the exclusive opportunity to bring you content on the brand new solo and cooperative mode, Sorcerer Endbringer, which is currently on Kickstarter, but let's be honest, the odds are you found my video because you're interested in seeing what that Kickstarter page is offering. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. In this video, I'm going to run you through uh, all of the new elements that I have here in front of me, how the cooperative and how the solo modes play, and then I'm gonna sit down and do my very best with Maselda here to finally take down Erling Khan, the, uh, the main nemesis, the main man-eater that I am facing. You see, sorcerers were not the only magic users or the only, uh, the only beings that the old gods created. Instead, they also crafted these man-eaters. Nemesi that were so big and powerful they could bend humanity and all of creation to their will. And our squabbling, the new magic that is existing here uh, on Earth, has slowly brought these creatures back. And instead of our own warfare in the city streets, we now either have to face them on our own or team up with other sorcerers to deal with the real threat to all of creation. Now, that's not saying we're not still a little wicked and evil. We just don't want them to take what we've worked so hard to claim for ourselves. And so, that is, that is the game we are playing. We are doing our very best to face off, hold back the swelling hordes, and finally close the rifts that are opening that are allowing Erling Khan and all of these other nemesi to climb through, to exist again in the realms of man. And so, with that being said, let me go ahead and start running you through what we have in front of me here so I can finally get to the gameplay and prove, once and for all, a Quackalope can win a solo game. It's been debated. It's been, it's been a big, like, there's a big, uh, you know, there's a big debate in our community as to whether or not it's possible. I guarantee with this gameplay, will be. So, in front of me here, uh, pretty much your setup as a sorcerer is going to be pretty standard you're still going to select uh, three of your classic decks, right? So this time here I'm playing Maselda, the Necromancer of the Screaming Coast. So I've taken a character card, a lineage card, and a domain card. And in fact, the new Kickstarter is going to add a total of six more packs that you can mix. This is a deck construction game where you craft your character from a series of uh, optional cards, giving you an immense amount of versatility when it comes to the character you're playing, the type of magic you're using, and the location you come from. And all of those decks play uniquely, but somehow still fit together uh, in a really fascinating way. So you're still going to craft and establish your sorcerer in the same way, using the items from the core box or any of the expansions. What this new system is going to add is primarily going to be our nemesis, our archetype, and our scenario. Now, I think in the core game, there's going to be four of each type of these cards, giving you something like 64 or somewhere around there, different variations of showdowns that you could face. Here in this case, I'm facing Erling Khan, the Death Dealer, who is leading the invasion. That is the situation. That is the scenario we're facing here. And there's going to be some specific conditions that affect our battle board that are unique to uh, this scenario specifically. On each one of these three cards, we will have uh, items or conditions that resolve. For instance, at the beginning of each turn, put a hate counter on this card. If there are five hate counters generated, destroy them and deal five global damage. Global damage is going to spread across all of our ranks here. It could be applied to my own health, which I'll get to in just a bit, or any of our minions that exist here, both me and whoever else I'm working with. They're also going to have a series of colors going up and down our archetype and our nemesis card, those will relate specifically 
to, uh, to these cards that we're going to be drawing, and I'll go over how these cards work in just a bit. These are going to be multi-use cards that function across various stages of this gameplay. Over here with the Death Dealer. During the first round, do not spawn any enemy minions. Instead, spawn one dreaded follower per player into each battlefield and one into the graveyard. You see, the beast that I'm facing here is bringing the undead up, their writhing masses. I imagine graveyards around London slowly splitting with fire shooting out and these skeleton rotting faces crawling up. And so, we've placed a rotting follower in each one of our locations and one down here in our graveyard. We also have an entire stack of, uh, of rotting skeleton beings that are probably not going to be the most fun to deal with. So if I was playing a cooperative mode in this setup here, I would actually have more than one rotting follower in each of these locations. I would have two because it indicates that you're spawning them based on how many people you're playing with. In a solo game, it's going to be one per location. And then finally down here, our scenario card, Leading the Invasion. Now this is a fairly straightforward scenario card. They get more advanced and complicated depending on how you mix them into this equation. So as far as setup, there's going to be no special rules. But then when it comes to the special in-game rules, we have an ambush. Each time a non-token minion is spawned, we're going to weaken one friendly minion in a battlefield. Now, weaken cannot kill our minions, but instead it will drain the power and life out of them. So we'll always kind of be in that balance of trying to keep our minions alive so we can take down this big bad guy and, uh, and slowly being whittled away by not only the skeletons that are rising up and overwhelming us, but also the cards that's slowly draining the power and the essence out of us. And then finally, Endgame is going to come down to destroying these three gates here, the Aspects of Death. There's no special Endgame condition according to this current scenario card. So now it's probably a good time for me to tell you a little bit about how you win or lose this game. The win condition for me is going to have to do with these three aspects of death I have setting in the middle of our uh, London streets. So unlike core sorcerer, unlike the core game, we're not fighting over the land itself. Instead, we're fighting to take control of these rifts that are opening. We're doing our very best to close off these three different aspects of death. And if there were more people playing, this is another area where the game would scale based on multiplayer. So in a cooperative game, you'd have one in each location per person. Now, I have a few of these extra ones over here that I didn't play, and I can show you. On the front, we have nine essence in each of these aspects of death. On the back, we have a uh, event or scenario that happens. When you destroy this, you're going to be flipping it over and it'll create some in-game havoc that destroys or enhances or buffs or does just something bad across the board. So in a solo game, I have to deal with one of these at each location. In a multiplayer game, you may find yourself destroying one rift and immediately having to deal with the fallout of that or the overwhelming effects of that in order to destroy the second one. You'll also notice that our, uh, our nemesis here, Erling Khan, is between two of these locations. This is going to be the size of the standee that you get. Now, all of this is a prototype copy, of course. The cards have been, uh, they've been printed really nice, but this is a prototype copy. But this standee here will be the same size when you get it in your core game, and it is going to go between two of our battlefields. He will, in fact, affect both of those locations, and at the top of every round, we're going to be rolling a die to determine which of the two battlefields he is actually split between. I get to place my mini, Maselda here, in any of the one battlefields that I would like, like you do in Classic Sorcerer. So that is the win condition for me. The loss condition for me is going to deal with health. Now right now I'm going to be using some dice down here on this tracker. Uh, they're going to have a very nice, one of those high quality dials from some of their other games with the full custom artwork that fits directly into Sorcerer for you to track your health with. In this case we don't have that prototype yet so I'm using three dice. Every player in a solo or cooperative game of Sorcerer is going to get 30 health. So if we're playing a two, ga two player game or a three player game that'll be 60 or 90 health. And that is a shared pool of health, so one player will not get knocked out before both players have lost the game. You continue 
working together, uh, summoning beasts, and doing your very best to finally take down the Nemesis, or you both lose together. So in my case, I have three die here. All of them are D10s. I will be rotating them down and just removing them or discarding them as I take damage. My loss condition is pretty straightforward. Uh, I find myself overwhelmed by the, uh, the crawling masses or potentially uh, with a giant axe sweeping through the air uh, and my body will lay crumpled in the ruins of London while Erling Khan devours and destroys the rest of the globe or enslaves humanity and bends them to his will, or whatever other elements that he wants to do. So that's some of the core overview. I think the last things I want to touch on before we get into the gameplay and I actually start showing you how this plays from turn to turn, is going to be this card here. This set of cards are going to be the most integral part of the solo or cooperative mode. This is going to be our AI system. Now, these decks here, just like our sorcerer cards, mix and match and create unique patterns and scenarios that you can face. But as you're doing that, you're also going to be constructing and building this unique deck. And so each one of these characters are going to have some uh, some interesting battle conditions. Here with uh, Erling Khan, he was one of the first man-eaters, one of the first great deities to ever be created. And he was so powerful, he actually struck down one of his nemeses. And so he struck down another god, was quickly banished by all of them before, of course, sorcerers took over, before they were all banished into oblivion. And so he is one of the most powerful gods who's ever existed. And he is coming back, and he is not happy, and he is more powerful than he has ever been, and he intends to burn the world down. So in his cards and in his flavor text here, you will see that emphasized. But on these cards, you're going to have stages of card utilization. At the top here, you have a win-revealed effect. That effect is going to happen in these battle zones. Wherever Erling Khan is facing off with us, he will draw a card. It could be an immediate effect or it could be an ongoing effect, and it'll be placed down over here. When these cards are revealed or when they're placed down, you'll do whatever that top action says. For instance, this one here, Incinerate. When revealed, choose and destroy one friendly minion. Bad for me. Next, you're going to have a little bit of flavor text, which, for a Quackalope, is perfect. As the executioner screams in rage, fire spontaneously erupts all around you. Like I said, good guy, genuine guy, good communicator, trying to burn the world down. You're then going to have a series of colors, which you can see we have blue, red, green, and white, and these are gonna tie directly to our cards over here. Whenever we are in our upkeep phase or our action phase, we're going to be going back and forth between Erling Khan and ourselves. During that phase, these items will relate to his Nemesis card. Doing things like gaining him hate, causing us to discard omens, and causing us to potentially get rid of cards from our hand that are our choice. Then during the battle phase specifically, we're going to be drawing these cards for every fight that is resolved from his minions. We'll tap them, we'll draw a card, and we'll reference our archetype deck over here. That deck is going to have things like plus attack or... Uh, potentially spawn minions from the graveyard or from the core deck. Uh, so that is going to be the AI system or the element that is influencing the battle stage. And then down here at the bottom, this is going to be the critical zone. If we roll a critical hit and choose to assign it to one of these aspects of death here, we will get to draw a card and potentially get a boon from doing so. Now these are not all good. On the bottom of this one here it says critical, restore two defense, and gain one omen. That's not bad, but some of these could do things like help Erling Khan generate some hate over there. So you do have to keep an eye out for exactly what's happening. And I think overall that's going to be the flow of the game. I think it's about time to go ahead and swing into the gameplay here, show you how it works, and hopefully, certainly, watch me take down and banish Erling Khan back into the nether from which he came, uh, slowly, you know, snuffing out his flame like a candle. So let's go over the character that I'm playing here. Like I said, this could be any of the multitude of different characters, lineages, and domains that you could get from the core box or any of the expansion packs. Here I've chosen my favorite, which is going to be Maselda. Uh, her action ability, exhaust this skill card to exhaust a non-legend enemy minion with a cost of four or less. If there's not one to exhaust, gain three energy instead. Now this will resolve at her location, wherever I've decided to put her down. 
uh, and this will let me cycle or exhaust some of his minions or potentially give me some energy, which is going to be important. We have the Necromancer. This is an ongoing effect at her location. Whenever you play a zombie minion from your graveyard, you may exhaust this skill card to weaken a non-legend minion twice. And then finally, of the Screaming Coast. This is going to be a tactic, so it can happen when I battle. You may exhaust this skill card to weaken a minion. If you weaken the attacking minion, it gets plus three attack. So this could potentially give me a boon to some of my attacking minions, hopefully overwhelming their ranks. Now, the last few things that I do want to go over. Every round, every round during upkeep, we're going to gain four mana. We're not going to be able to roll this dice four mana specifically uh, because in a two-player game, you both would get an equal amount. Here in this case, against the Nemesis, you're always going to get four so that it stays equal or balanced. Also, our omen counters are going to be used not only to re-roll our die, just like in a standard situation, but also to re, uh, reshuffle or redraw cards when his uh, minions decide to attack us if we really don't like the effect that's happening. Our fate counter here can be exhausted to re-roll an entire handful of dice, which I will probably likely need, or it can be used to go ahead and neutralize the effect of one of these cards when his minion is utilizing it. If we don't even want to re-roll, if we just want to say, in this battle zone, I, I can't have any more creatures spawn, that's, that's what that's for. So, uh, I think... I think we're going to get started. If you've never seen a Quackalope gameplay before, please know that there are going to be moments where I'm sitting here trying to read through my cards so that I can uh, make sure that I'm making the best decisions possible. All of those silent moments, those pauses and breaks will be edited down so that this is as tight and consistent and stays with the entertainment or the action of the game as much as it can. Uh, that being said, if you are brand new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. We put out new videos every single week, gameplay reviews, unboxings, full documentary videos, uh, and we'd really appreciate you to stick along for the ride. Whatever the case, let's go ahead and swing into this. So at the start of the round, uh, Erling Khan here is going to gain one hate counter, which is a good start. We're going to flip a card here, because he always goes first, and this is going to be red. Right now we're only worried about that color. Gain one hate counter. Remember, when he gets to five, we're going to take global damage across the board. Looking here at my deck of cards, I have a Macilda's Infiltrator, a Vengeful Mummy, a Graveborn Warden, a Rat Catcher, a Featherless Martyr, and a Corpse Feeder. Now, what I'm initially thinking is that Rat Catcher can help me summon someone from my graveyard, uh, and this Vengeful Mummy is actually not bad to have into my graveyard because I can play it buried. That's going to be one of the core effects uh, of my Necromancer deck here, I figured if I'm going to head-to-head -to -head against someone who is summoning the undead, the living corpses, I might as well have my own army of, uh, of undead to face him. I like, I like the idea of the city streets slowly crawling with like these half-rotten corpses that are just swiping at each other, putting zombie against zombie, while I face off against the real nemesis. This tiny, tiny little uh, glowing blue girl uh, just like a lightning bolt or, or a bright light uh, shining up against this glowing red flame and shadow on the horizon. Uh, you know, I'm a thematic player. I, I visually like the, uh, like the thought of that. So what I'm thinking is I think I want to go ahead and start populating the deck here. I'm going to have to fight in all three of these zones, so I really need to get minions down on the board uh, as effectively as possible, even if even if some of them get destroyed along the way, um, it's really pretty cru crucial. So I'm going to start here. My first action is going to be uh, my Featherless Martyr. Ongoing. Whenever you meditate, you may discard a card to draw a card. So I'm probably going to utilize that to actually get some of my mummies down here because I can use their buried effect. I don't need them into my hand. Starting here with her, drop two mana. She's going to play into the center region here, uh, and we're going to go ahead and draw a card. Green. Destroy one omen or generate one hate counter. The question here for me is, do I want to let him get up to five and just take some damage, or do I try to balance it off by destroying some omens and keeping him restrained? I think this early on, I'm going to hold on to my omens... I'm going to let him get some hate. Um, I'm going to see... I, I don't mind taking a little bit of damage because having them weakened, that's going to be the 
status of them anyway, it might not be a terrible decision. So I think now I'm gonna go ahead and use my meditate ability. I'm gonna draw up two cards, go ahead and cycle this down. And I just got the Council of Three and a Tactics card. Now this Tactic card is going to be fantastic. It'll also help me cycle cards out of my hand. Uh, and let's go ahead and discard the Vengeful Mummy because of her ongoing ability to draw up another Council of Three. When played, you may search your Grimoire, shuffle afterwards for up to three cards, and put them into your graveyard. Council of Three is actually really powerful to go ahead and populate my uh my deck there because i have cards that pull things out of my deck i'm really leaning towards utilizing that okay flipping this red one hate counter hopping on board i might want to hold it off i think i only want to let him gain full hate once so i might need to hold it off a bit more now on this turn i think i'm going to play the council of three i think i'm going to get some more people down here into my deck to start with so going down Council of Three, let's set them over here. Win played, search my deck, and place a few cards into here. So what I'm thinking is we play, there's the cat that has a buried ability. Um, what else do we want to toss in here? Another Vengeful Mummy. And then I think I might place, some of my cards specifically want sorcery cards in order to, in order to use them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a sorcery card into my graveyard too, just in case I get a card that helps me uh, recreate or spawn that. I'll go ahead and shuffle this up. And I gain a omen counter for playing the Council of Three over here in this location, which will be very good. Okay. White, this is going to have no effect. Perfect for me. The question is, what do I want to do now? Now, I needed to spend this play them. There are a lot of little things to keep track of as you're playing this uh, and so, you know, I will probably catch a few things along the way like gaining an omen token or, or making sure I spend my mana. Um, largely this is to show off how the gameplay functions and flows and give you a good example of it. Uh, if you catch me cheating along the way, just nullify my victory in the comment section down below. Normally happens to Jan, my co-host, anyway, so you know, if it happens to me, I won't, I won't feel too bad about it. I'm totally going to get this tactics card down think I think I really want to be able to do some damage early on that's sort of my thought and cycling cards is going to be good so I'm going to pay one I think I'm going to play this tactic cards right here I'm going to keep her out on the board let's play that so we can actually see what's going on there uh, and I'm going to gain an omen because I played that back over here to the con Okay, gaining a hate counter, all of these are going to be destroyed, so they're going to be moved off, and I'm taking five global damage. Here's the thing, I don't mind taking damage on my minions, because when I spawn more minions, I have to deal with them anyway. Um, so, let's see here. I will be able to attack first up here in this location. If I get a critical, I could take care of that minion before it attacks. Take one damage there. One, two, three... Yeah, let's take all four. Let's go ahead and weaken all of our people. That way, strategically, I don't mind having damage on me as long as I don't have to destroy my uh, destroy my people. Let's see here. Now is when I think I want to get up to three, uh, three energy left. So I'm going to go ahead and gain two, cycle this down, draw another card. White, no effect. So I was thinking that I was going to play the Rat Catcher down because when played, I can draw a card, discard a card, and then I can play a card with a minimum of two cost or less from my graveyard without paying the cost. But I just looked through there, and the only thing that I actually have in there is going to be the Vengeful Mummy, which I cannot utilize at the moment. So I didn't, I didn't plan that out the best. So I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play a Corpse Feeder. So dropping down by three... Corpse Feeder is going to pop over here into this location. Ongoing, whenever whenever another minion is destroyed, choose one. Heal one damage from this minion or gain one omen. So we might be able to populate some omens over here uh, and has a decent amount of defense. I have one more action left. Let's go ahead and cycle this card. Green, destroy one omen or generate a hate counter. I'll give him, I'll give him one omen. He'll go into the battle with one omen. Now, I think... 
I think I'm going to go ahead and pull out one of these Vengeful Mummies. Um, because I may play this minion from your graveyard without paying its cost. It's a good card. I'm able to get them out here on the board. It'll just take an action from me. And I think what I want to do is I want to go ahead and place him down. <sighs> Let's go ahead and take advantage of this middle of the zone. Let's get a little bit more control. I really don't want to let the uh, the Featherless Martyr go. So we are, we are out of the cycle. So now it's going to come to the battle phase specifically. Starting over here, you always go from left to right. We're going to be facing off against the Khan, which means we are drawing up a top card from his deck. Ongoing, at the end of each battle, generate four hate counters. The ground is filled with ruins, rubble, and dead bodies everywhere. It's the path of ruin leading to your doom. So he just, like slams his axe against the ground. Fire and magma and lava start splitting the ground open. And now we are at a disadvantage because this is going to be an ongoing or a persistent effect, meaning at the end of each battle here in this zone, he's going to generate four hate counters. So he's going to start doing an intense amount of damage on me uh, immediately, which is terrible. Now he's also going to go first. So we're going to tap his minion here. Now here's how battle resolves when it comes to these minions. You're always going to draw a card, which will modify their attack power. They do not roll dice. Instead, they're doing straight-up attack against me, and I have to assign it or resolve it accordingly. White is actually going to be great for me. Uh, minion gains minus one attack, so we have a total value of two attack coming in. And I'm actually going to go ahead and assign that straight here, just weakening my corpse feeder. I don't mind doing that. As long as the corpse feeder isn't destroyed, I think I'm still in a pretty good position. Coming down to my corpse feeder... We're going to attack. We're rolling three dice. And I have enough omen to hopefully guarantee that I do decent. Uh, two there. I'd really like to get one crit if I can. Because I'd like to be able to go ahead and take out the minion. Right now, I will just do two damage to the uh, the aspect there. Four damage coming in. I, I'm going to be fine with that for the moment. I'm not going to re-roll that. So the reason I'm not attacking the minion is because I cannot destroy any of the minions while the aspect of death is still there. This is like the area that is uh, the magical essence that is summoning these beings up from the graves. And so I must destroy it before I can take them out. What I can do is I can weaken them. They're always going to be a guard. So I can, I can get them down to the last remnants of their health. And then my attack will go through to this, uh, to this aspect of death itself. Moving over here into the new zone, we're going to be drawing up another card for Khan. Uh, when revealed, receive one damage for each minion present. One, two, three total. Now this will be discarded because it is not an ongoing effect. And four hate counter. All of these get cycled. This is terrible. I'm really going to have to watch my hate. Um, that, is a terrible, that is a terrible card to start off with. Uh, five damage coming my way. I think I'm going to have to take it. I'm going to have to take it straight up because I don't have a lot of creatures that can sacrifice for it. And here I'm taking three more damage. So one damage here, and we're going to be taking one damage here. So I'm down to four health remaining on this dice. So 24 health total out of the 30. And again, he's going to be attacking first. Three coming my direction. Flip a card. White. That's going to be great. Again, that is perfect. Two damage coming my way. I'm going to have to take it straight up again. So two. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. I think we start off with the uh, with the martyr here, who is going to have not only the tactic, but also the buff. Oh. You know, and I'm going to walk one thing back just because I don't think I'm going to get another opportunity to do it. I'm not going to take a damage on my minion there because I didn't have to. I'm going to take the damage here to my health so that I can give this minion a little bit extra power when he's attacking, hopefully flood through because of my ability with my domain here. Uh, so here with the uh, Featherless Martyr, we're going to be rolling a total of four dice. Uh, and we have a tactic. You may draw two cards, then discard two cards. <sighs> All right. We did get a crit, which is good. And I'll be able to roll five dice total with, uh, with the Vengeful Mummy. I think I'm going to spend an omen. Let's see if we can destroy one of these, uh, one of these domains, one of these aspects right away. Three. All right. Critical hit goes first. Always targets first. I'm going to wipe him out. Then two damage is going to spill over onto this location. Let's go ahead and draw up those two cards, 
and then discard two cards. I got the Necromancer and the Rat Catcher. Both of these cards I like a lot. Uh, let's discard the Graveborn uh, Warden. And then let's just discard a Council of Three. My Rat Catchers will be able to bring both of those out onto the, my tableau if I want them. Now here's the trick. Vengeful Mummy. Tapping him. We're going to weaken him. You may exhaust this skill card to weaken a minion. If you weaken the attacking minion, it gains plus three attack. Uh, yeah, that is that is exactly what we're, what we're going to do. So five dice total. And let's, let's hope I can get enough to power through here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need... I need one more damage, and I actually destroy this place. Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight, nine. This is going to be enough to destroy it. Now, critical hits go first. And that critical hit, remember, is going to draw a critical card for me. Uh, critical. Distribute two damage among enemy minions. So, sadly, this is going to be here at this location. So, I'm not going to be able to distribute the damage. Um... That is all right, though, because I at least go ahead and power through. We're going to go ahead and flip this and find out what the consequence of destroying this aspect is going to be. Uh, final Judgment. When revealed, destroy all minions, then spawn and exhaust one enemy minion for each friendly minion destroyed. Okay. So, <laughs> so all my people are gone. That's all right. It's all right. And we're going to go ahead and spawn two more minions up top here. They're both going to be exhausted. And we spawned a Menacing Dead. Ongoing. This minion has plus one attack for each other Wraith minion. So plus one at the moment. Moving over here to this location. We do not draw a Nemesi card here because we are first. And we also, this is kind of like his blind spot, right? The, the part of the city his attention is not currently focused on. Uh, and we're going to get to go first here because this is his blind spot. So we have two damage coming in. So let's go ahead and roll, or two dice being rolled. And let's see if we can take out, see if we can take out that minion before it gets to attack. I'm, I'm going to spend this to re-roll. I'd really like to get a crit and go ahead and take that minion out. That is not going to be the crit that I was looking for. Two damage coming through. None of that's going to go on him. Two of those are going to pop on to our aspect here. And then this minion is going to attack. Drawing a card. Blue. This minion gains plus one attack for each other wraith. And apply as much of its damage to friendly minions as possible. Three damage coming through. This is going to be destroyed. Okay. Well. Not a, not a great outcome. Took one damage to destroy him here. Two damage coming through. We are down to 19 health, which is, uh, spoiler alert, not exactly where I'd like to be. So that's going to be the end of the battle phase. I bring my person back. I pop back up here to six. I gain four energy. I'm going to refresh my fate token, gain an omen token. We're going to roll for where the con goes. Five. So one through four would have been here. Five through eight is moving over to this new location. I'm glad I destroyed that middle one, though, because I do have to worry about them spawning and attacking me, but it is actually easier for me to attack them, because now that this has popped, I can attack the minions directly, and they're not very beefy. They're kind of bones shattering and, and, and little tendons and stuff holding them together. Uh, he's going to gain a hate counter because he's just a bad dude. <laughs> um, and, I, uh, and I have to go ahead and spawn, well, refresh, and then spawn minions at each one of these locations. And I do not have much territory control. Spawning another rotting uh, rotting follower. King of the Cursed. When played, destroy one friendly minion. If you can't receive three damage, we are taking three direct damage. Down to six. And then Cursed Bearer. When played, receive one damage for each enemy wraith minion, including this one. We're receiving two more damage because I didn't need health. Anyway, I'm down to 14 health left. We are beyond the middle point. To be fair, though, that first round went pretty well. Got rid of one of the gates, and I'm, I'm 
probably about halfway through the other two. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start resolving this. Starting with him, we're going to shuffle this back up because you always shuffle at the top of the round. Let's see. Let's see what sort of damage we can do. I'm going to place myself going to place myself over here. Let's try not to deal with him. Let's see if we can potentially wipe out this gate next. That's my thought. Uh, starting with him. Blue. Blue. Discard one card or generate one hate counter. Now, he's always going to get four. I, I really think I need to limit him. I'm going to go ahead and discard a card because I do not feel... do not feel like I can sacrifice uh, more damage to him. Moving over to me. Real question is, what do I feel like doing? The Rat Catcher will allow me to play someone from my deck. It seems pretty standard. They're going to cost three. So let's go ahead and take some mana, pop up here to six, so then I have enough to spawn both of the Rat Catchers that I have. White is going to be no effect. One, two, three. Dropping down. Set a Rat Catcher down right here. Uh, when played, draw a card. Discard a card, then you may play a minion with a cost of two or less from your graveyard without paying the cost. I like the alluring Enchant Enchantress. I gotta be honest. I think I'm gonna get rid of my Foul Necromancer. Um, I've got more in the deck here. I don't know that I'll be able to utilize him, especially not this turn because I'm spending so much on my uh, Rat Catchers. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and play the Graveborn Warden. Uh, and I'm gonna stick her right here in this location as well. Uh, I love that, I love that artwork. It's like shrieking red cloaked uh, creature. When played, this is gonna give me an omen, which is fantastic. When played, you may return a minion from your graveyard to your hand. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring back, you know, I might bring back the Necromancer into my hand because I, I don't mind having it. I just didn't need it at the moment. So going down there. Okay, that's going to be the end of that turn. Cycling over here for the con again. White again. Fantastic. Pushing down, pushing down. We're going to spawn another one of these rat catchers. And I think we're going to do it... If I don't worry about this middle section, I'm going to take a lot of damage here. But right now my focus is really focusing on these gates, I think. For the moment. That could be a serious mistake. It probably is. Either way, though, he's gonna be doing. He's gonna be sweeping in with damage. Let's do it in the middle. I'm gonna be taking much more damage from the middle section here. Okay, playing that, I'm going to draw up a card. Council of three. I'll discard the council of three. I don't feel like I need them immediately. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get to summon another minion out onto the board. And I think who I'm gonna summon is going to be my fearless martyr again. She's got a nice bit of defense, a decent bit of damage. I like where that stands. Okay, back to the con. White again. These draws, these draws are just perfect. Moving down, gaining two, back to the con, red. Gonna gain a hate counter, no matter what. Okay, I've got two more. I've got two of my ghouls down here. I'm not even picking up my hand now. Now I'm just playing for my graveyard. Let's go down one and summon a vengeful mummy. All right, back down. Red again, gaining another hate counter. That is all right at the moment. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Down one, and let's get another Vengeful Mummy out onto the board here. Let's just do a line of mummies right there. Okay, I, I feel like we're in an okay spot. I'm not convinced we are, but I feel like we are. We get to start the battle off here. At the end of this, we're going to take some damage, but we don't have to pull a card for Khan. Uh, and we get to start the attack phase. Now, who's going to be doing the most damage for me? I think we're going to start here with the Corpse Feeder. That's what I'm thinking. And the nice thing is, because I was already fully weakened when all of these spawned, or I didn't have any creatures out on the board at all, I actually didn't take a lot of additional damage just from them their spawning abilities. So starting here, three dice... Now, I'm at this location. Let's attack with... Let's change this up. Let's attack with the Graveyard Warden. Uh, and let's go ahead and use the Screaming Coast. Um, 
Oh, and let's see here. Did I summon a zombie? I did, in fact. I summoned two zombies. Uh, but I cannot weaken them. They're already down at their bottom, so I cannot use my Necromancer skill. That's all right. Okay. Uh, you may exhaust this skill card to weaken a minion. If you weaken the attacking minion, it gets plus three. So we are going to be rolling a total of five dice again. Let's do some damage. All right. Let's re-roll the damage. That's a little bit better. Uh, I I want to double down on this. One omen. Spend this. Cool. That'll work for me. Uh, let's see here. Critical is going to resolve first. So I think I'm going to assign that critical to one of our zombies up here. He's going to go away. And then all the other damage, because it can't weaken that zombie anymore, or that rotting follower anymore, all of that's going to spill over onto the gate here. And we are destroying our second gate. Aspect of death flipped. When revealed, spawn one minion from the horde's graveyard on each battlefield. Do not resolve its wind plate effect. We have a pile of rotting minions coming back. I wish I'd known that. I probably would not have uh, used my critical to destroy him. But that's all right. You live, you learn, you die. You know, seems accurate. Uh, starting up top here. Exhausting, three damage coming my direction. Let's resolve this green. Spawn one minion uh, exhausted from the top of the Horde's graveyard. Do not resolve its wind plate effect. There is nothing currently in the Horde's graveyard, so it is going to be unable to spawn. And it's going to be doing three damage over to me. Let's go ahead and assign that damage where we can. So, two damage here. You know, let's wipe it. All three damage. Let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, character who's played. And let's use the Corpse Feeder. Let's try our best. Damage can go directly to our minions now, so let's try our best to wipe some of them out. That's going to be perfect. It's going to wipe both of them. Okay. And my Rat Catcher is not going to be able to go. So moving over here into this middle zone, he's going to go ahead and gain four. He gets to five. He keeps two on and he's going to deal five damage across to me. Let's start assigning this damage appropriately. One damage. Two damage. Let's just clean it out. Uh, three damage, four damage. Three damage, four damage, and five damage. I'm okay with this. Starting up top here, he's going to be drawing a card. Reckless Hate. When revealed, receive collateral damage equal to the number of hate counters generated. Okay. Currently two. Collateral damage is going to be two. We're going to be able to take one of that onto her, and we're going to uh, take one here, moving me down to 13 total health. Uh, the Executioner goes berserk, charging towards you. All he wants is to destroy everything to feed his ravenous thirst and fuel his hate. All right, and starting up here, we're going to go with the person who has the highest starting attack, uh, which everything combined is going to be the King of the Cursed. Uh, three damage coming my direction. Lay that over. Actually, I think if I'm playing this fair, doing it as hard as it should be for myself, these have lower defense, so they're easier to pop. So my thought would be they would actually go first because he is most likely to last to the end of this cycle and attack me. I don't know if that's how the rules officially play it, but if I'm playing, like, Rules of Death, that's how we'll play it. Uh, critical. Uh, oh, not critical. White. White is going to be a minus one, two damage coming my direction. I'm taking both to myself. I want to be able to attack with my minions. 11 health left. <sighs> Start the attack off with the Rat Catcher. Two damage. Uh, and we'll be able to go directly at them. So let's see what we can do. That's all right. Two damage going across. Let's destroy a Rotting Follower. And let's assign one damage to this one here. Actually, the other one's going to go first. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. Rotting Follower gone. Now the King of the Cursed is going to go. Three damage coming across to me. Pulling another card. Red. 
Spawn one minion exhausted from the top of the horde deck. Do not resolve its win played effect. I'm going to let it happen. Uh, Dreaded Shrieker. Win played. Doesn't matter. It's not going to happen. And he is currently exhausted. So, three damage coming across to me. I'll take one damage here. Uh, and two, three, moving me down to nine health left. But all I have to do is pop this last location. Here's the other problem, though. This last location is going to be at the very end of the battle resolution, so it's going to get... It's going to get a little tricky. My turn. Two damage going across. Can I go ahead and destroy that last minion? I should be able to. Two critical strikes. Wiping him out. So that'll be with one of them. And let's go ahead and pop this one as well. Okay. Last battlefield. Event card. Brawl. When revealed, receive one damage for each minion present. The brawl is furious and chaotic. Many times, allies and forces strike the wrong target in the chaos of the battle. One, two, three, four, five. Five damage coming to me. That drops me to four. I need them to fight, though. If I'm going to win this, I really need them to push through. Okay. I, uh, starting here with the strongest. That's going to be one of these rotting followers. Three coming across to me, flipping a card for them. White is going to subtract it by two it is exactly if i could just have a deck full of those white cards that would be fantastic two damage coming to me that is not that is actually not good i'm down to two health i'm so close i'm so no i'm so but but i'm but there's a big and uh okay okay all right uh vengeful mummy is going to attack two Attack going across. Why? Why? What? It's not, it's not even, it's not even, I'm not. I could spend that. I could get an omen. If I got a crit, if I got a crit, and that's a big if, I could take out the next rotting follower, which would not do three damage to me. Let's do it. One of these is going to be re-rolled. This one right here, my saving grace. Nope. This, one damage going on to the, uh, the curse bearer here. And the rotting follower is going to attack. Come on. Blue. This minion gains plus one attack for each other wraith and apply as much of its damage to friendly minions as possible. Three, four, five, two, three. All right. So, so hear me out. I lost. Uh, you know, this is a prototype. It's still in the works. They're still developing. They're trying to get it to a point where I can play and win. I'm just kidding. I, honestly, it has come down. I've, I've, I've play tested this a few times, trying to get as accurate and, and as informed as I can for this video uh, and this has came down multiple times to those final those final showdowns those final moments now when talking with the team behind white wizard games they said it's right now probably at a 60 40 balance so about 40 percent of the time is when you'll win 60 percent of the time is when it's going to uh, come down to that clutch vic victory um, I gotta be honest even though this is still in play testing this is still being developed this is still uh, a work in progress this is a very good work in progress. Um, I was really, I, I already love the core game of Sorcerer. Uh, it, is, it is a really, really interesting deck construction game. I think it is aggressively beautiful. And the way that it combines your decks to create uh, a real, I mean, honestly, a, a tangible character that you can interact with. Um, I adore that. And so the solo and the cooperative mode, I mean, I reached out to them. I really wanted a chance to, to take a closer look at this. Uh, and it is it is really, really well done. I was talking with some people in my Discord before filming this and before even having my, my hands on it, and I was saying, like, it's going to come down to the, the AI pattern. Like, does the creature feel... Does it feel real and living, or does it feel like you're, you're hitting kind of a sack or, or a potato? Uh, and that is not the case at all. 
uh, embodied in these three cards that you combine to create a nemesis, embodied in the way that it scales with a solo all the way up to a multiplayer uh, cooperative. Uh, combine that with the way that these cards chain together to create and, and wreak havoc across the board. I really genuinely am enjoying the systems that they put in place here, and, and I cannot wait to get my own uh, sort of official copy uh, once it finally comes to print. This is cool. I had a good time. Honestly, if you've watched to this point, you, you probably have hopefully been able to see enough and learn enough about how the solo or cooperative mode of this game is going to play to see if it is the right type of game for you. Um, that is the hope with all of these gameplays or how to plays or overviews. We want to break things down in a way that gives you as much information as possible so you can really understand the dynamics and, uh, and exactly how the card play exists on the table. Uh, I had a good time with this. I, I, now, I now want to face off against him again because I, I promised you that I would show you that a Quackalope can in fact win. Uh, and I didn't do that. So uh, Green Mouse is going to score another victory, uh, and I, I am going to reevaluate my strategy and maybe come back for, for another swing uh, at a later time. Whatever the case, thank you for watching. If you made it to this part in the video, first off, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment letting us know uh, what you're excited to see, what type of character decks you're excited to play. Honestly, let me know if you'd like to see me give this another swing, maybe with some other character decks here. Um, I'd like to see what other sort of combinations exist and how they can function on the game state. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this, if this has shown off, uh, if you made it to this part, go over to the Kickstarter page and leave a quack in their comment section, um, letting them know that you enjoyed the content, that you thought it was worthwhile, that you, uh, you like the stuff that we're doing. All that being said, though, whatever you do, Remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games, and we'll see you next time when I win. <laughs> Thank you.